What's up, guys? Pittsburgh White Schwartz back again. We're back here with Overlord. We're going to finish it out with red, and then we got blue after that. So let's jump right into it. Andy, you want to read us this shelter? here? No, but I guess I will anyways, mm -hmm. since you asked so nicely. We got this shelter. here. When you play her, you choose one of your opponent's front row characters. Give them minus 500 power. Or this turn. Bushy Road added again with their missed translations. I can't believe it. Oh, Brainstorm. Uh, play one, rest this, and you salvage for each character. It's all for a salvage brainstorm in your colors. Minus yeah, 500 good. power. Good first effect. Uh, notably, this outs stuff like... Um, what it'll be, it's out stuff like Kaban, which we don't have a lot of yet in English, but uh, Memory Snow's Bunny Ricky is like yeah, a good this, example of something that it hits. Yeah, the, the 500 power front row stuff with a bunch of really overloaded effects. Yeah. Some of the, some of the Psychono cards you're playing. Yeah, like I was, gonna, I was about to say like JC, like 500 power memory JC. Like you just kill it, get rid of it. Um... Yeah, seems seems pretty good. Five hundred power bombs. Cards probably a lot better position, you know, in the Japanese meta than for yeah. us. But um, still fine. I think, I think this. I think this effect is going to age nicely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To sell for a I salvage. I'd probably give it like too. a. I'd probably give it like a B now, but like give it a few years. Yeah, I mean, it'd be an A. I think it's good. Yeah, I'm English biased towards salvage, so I'm going to give it the A. Yeah, salvage brainstorm I prefer as well. Yeah, I mean, English is only going to get closer to the JP meta, so this this effect will only get more relevant as we get more. Oh, wait, no, Adventure Time. Adventure Time has a uh, on reverse 500 power memory drop search. Oh, the. Uh, that's the relevant. Prince, if, that set, if that set is like shaping up to be as like good or memory focused as like the few reveals that we've seen like imply it to be. Um, that's really fucking relevant. Minus five hundred power to kill your drop. You like because you deny them drop search and like you deny the memory. The memory compression. And yep. for playing your brainstorm to the back row, like something you would do anyway. So this also just seems strictly better than that other card from the uh the green. Oh, the, the other give, minus, like, minus power five hundred to two. Oh yeah, because this is a brainstorm. Like, this is a card you don't feel bad about running at, like, 3 to 4 anyway. So, oh, like, yeah. Just, like, brainstorms with other good effects are uh, always dumb. And, like, I don't know, fielding two of this to, like, kill something, whatever, doesn't even feel that bad. If it was, like, your only other playable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know too much about the, the set, but this seems like the brainstormer you'd want to use. Yeah, I don't think there's, like, much of a contest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, too bad Drew's not here. He loves neg power. Yeah, yeah, Drew. Too bad it doesn't, too bad it doesn't, hit, doesn't back hit back row. Drew unfortunately couldn't make it here tonight. Um, but we've all played into his Overlord list a lot. Uh, and like I've played the list on TTS a couple times myself. So we'll try to try to give our best uh, mm -hmm. contextual um, evaluation of the cards as well, as far other than just the usual in a vacuum stuff that we do. Mm -hmm. So she's she's nine thousand, not fourteen. Yeah, only nine thousand vampire. There you go, Brian. All right. We've got Albedo again. Endless Loyalty. Uh, if you have four or more heteromorphic... Uh, it's heteromorphic race, right? It doesn't yeah. matter. Or Nazric trait characters uh, at early plays from your hand, so full field early play. During your turn, gets 500 power for each of your other heteromorphic race or Nazric trait characters. Uh, on play, ditch a card, heal, uh, heal to stock. Seems pretty good. Heal to stock 11k on your turn, pretty good. Condition for a standby deck, pretty bad. Um, mm, yeah. Not being yeah, able to play yeah. two, because uh, the deck refreshes like pretty well, like any modern deck. The fact that you can't like slam two, heal down to like 2 0 or something after like an X6 refresh and one cancel is like pretty bad that you have to like neg field that hard. Especially if you're like playing standby that turn as well. Like if you draw into one. And you can like set up a ditch for like a good standby that turn. Like feels really bad when you like lose a card for no reason because of this condition. Yeah, you're right. It'd like be like in, yeah. You know what I like this in better maybe is like um like win non pants. standby build. Yeah, because you're yeah, already you running the Shaltier brainstormer. It sounds like yeah. everybody's gonna run Shaltier brainstorm. Yeah. You and just if, fix like, pretty you run easy. Shaltier and this is your other red. That should be enough red fix. Yeah, it's probably definitely it definitely probably feels better. In the other builds, um, but yeah. I mean, like obviously, standby runs this too, right? Like, mm -hmm. 
yeah, I mean, in non-standby builds, uh, Mesmerizing Water Goddess Aqua is a good card. This is literally that card if you have a full field. So in non-standby, yeah. this is a, a perfectly reasonable, pretty strong heal to stock card. Costs one stock to play 11k, swings for two soul. And you play it in standby anyway, because it's probably the early play of choice. Just in general. Probably. Have we seen any other relevant early plays up to this point? No. no. Um, the only thing that makes it not as bad is that you probably have 2 1 Eins and Cocutus Live. Like, that's pretty, like, on average for the deck. Mm -hmm. But not being able to heal twice feels bad. Like, yeah. just in general. Like, not having the option. Without negging feels really bad in a standby list. Um, yeah, I'm I'm checking back. There's um, the one Nabe from Yellow. Shout yeah, out to Nabe. Yellow. Two or less climaxes early play experience plus a thousand power, and look at X cards. Yeah, not a healer. This is definitely That's better. Top check X or a top check X early play. Yeah, then this is the. The early play healer of choice, at least. We've seen the, the other one sits at um, ten five cross turn. Yeah, and Abe is probably better in a uh, standby since uh, experience is uh, total four levels in level zone. Well, I think the standby deck wants to heal more than anything. It's a one cost heal. It actually does the standby deck have um like a card that pops back to hand? Yes. Is there anything in red that does that? Yeah, there are cards that do that. Then maybe the full field thing isn't like as terrible. You'd still have to play over can, it. What do you mean? You like pop back your other. It only pops handle. back when you play a standby. Yeah, so, so if so you're trying to play two, it goes even with standby. On your turn, then you uh, I guess so you can't like leave an empty spot right. and just you, trigger. You have four yeah. others, play one, and then play over something to heal again if you want to heal a second. Time. Yeah, it, it's literally just that because you don't have the option to heal twice if you want to. Because like at that point you your just, eyes you two have one to stagger it a little bit. You just got to do one uh, one turn well, and then the other one the next turn. That'd be I would agree with you if Weiss was a game where you could guarantee having another turn at level two even when you are compressed. But a lot of times you don't. And if you're at two two and you had the option to heal two and it didn't set you behind in terms of stock and what did you wanted to do the pro the following turn you probably do it. Mm -hmm. Um and this means you have to neg an additional card to do it and you're negging cards to heal. Um, because you have to ditch the card on play. I guess you're you're standby and you're holding field anyway, so you don't need to uh continuously invest in your board. Your hand is kind of yeah. Irrelevant. It's only it's like I don't know. It just really feels bad when that kind of stuff comes up. The card even, itself even in a vacuum, the, um, it's fine. Yeah, like the the one event we ended last video with, um, the uh, compass event. Mm -hmm. You could utilize that at level two. To like definitely, along with holding board, not leaving open lanes with the compass event and everything, you probably could live two turns at level. You, you could live another turn at level two. To play well, a second you'd hope eight. that any modern set could live two to three turns at level two if played correctly. The problem is, it's like, twice is a game where you're seven and twenty and you eat thirteen, like, and not being able to like, not having the option to recover from a bad scenario because you have to. To play two of these, you have to... How many fucking cards is that? Not counting the two Albedos, that's three cards. Um, provided you held four. You're refilling your board four. anyway, though, right? Like, You'd have to fill four yeah, assuming four Assuming they answer your board, you want to field a full board anyway. Yeah, but you, I'm saying you'd have to... I guess to, it's awkward to stand by that. You'd have to... Yeah. If you wanted to heal twice on one turn with this card, you would have to hold four spaces on your board cross turn. At least. Play one, ditch a card to heal. Play another one, ditch another card to heal. And you had to play over a card to heal. You have, have to play over field. something. Yeah, so it's like... I think like, that's too aggressive of a line to take with this specific card. Well, it's I mean. it's specifically not aggressive. I'm saying, like, if you're in those situations where, like, you have to do it, you have to do it. Like, you're at 2-6 or whatever, and it's the wrong play to, like, clock your, like go into level 3. and Like, it's the right play to mill out and, like, hold compression. The fact that you have to neg that many cards to do it I don't know. I don't know. I don't bad. know if you stretch that far to heal one extra damage. Yeah, one, healing one in Weiss is really at level broken. Two. Healing Weiss, healing one at level two in Weiss is really fucking broken. Like in general. 
anything that heals you in this game. It's yeah. busted. I know that in English, we're, like, super... We got a super fucking hard on for, like, pushing damage and finishing games. But, like, the meta is slowing down. The game is, like, grinding to a halt. We've seen, like, set after set come out in English. What, what, the slime is on the way. It's another slow set, like, in general. Um, like, Overlord's coming. Adventure Time, based on the cards I've shown so far, it's, it becomes a meta deck that's a pain... Or, like, a, a memory deck that's painfully slow. Um, like, the the entire meta is grinding to, like, an absolute halt. But I guess that's a discussion for another time. Like, yeah. the, this card in a vacuum is totally fine. Hmm. Just, like, something I wanted to note on. It's, like, evaluating on these sort of, like, but what if I have to heal twice at level 2? Or something like that. Like, is becoming more and more relevant. Um, based on the deck. Because, like, the meta is slowing now. I guess so, yeah. Yeah. Alright, we can move on here. All right, here's the other finisher, the other three two lines. Um, during your turn, gets 500 power for each of your other, so it's a 11-5 on your turn. Top check three, add one on play, digs into its own climax. Climax combo, and this card gets a reverse. You can pay three and ditch two if you have the door in play. Um, put the battle opponent of this card on top of your opponent's deck, and then choose a Death Knight, which is this 1055 that we saw when we were reviewing green and put it in the slot this character was in. So this card specifically becomes the 1-0. You cannot put it in another slot like Anastasia or um, the uh, Emilia. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to be this card slot, and it's a Climax combo, and it's pay 3, ditch 1, bounce this card to your hand. So the, the Climax combo oh, does go gosh. even, because this does come back to your hand, but the fact that this card does not heal on play and cantrips instead... Like it makes it like kind of yeah. weird for a deck that wants to grind out the win, especially if you're playing like the compass and like the other grindy cards. Damn my deck! It's just like I don't know. I feel like this is just objectively worse than the the nuke card as like a yeah. thing. It's just like it's just this card is you so much more feels, feels bad. Like, it, it feels like they just took every outdated power corrupt effect they could and just like slapped it on one card. Yeah, the card feels you know like I mean? it's so awkward. Like, yeah, it goes even because it pops back to your hand, but it doesn't really matter because it doesn't heal. Right. Yeah. And it's technically a finisher combo. Like Anastasia is a technically a finisher, but it's not a good Aren't one. Aren't all those like pay two, ditch a card, and this is pay three, ditch a card, oh, bounces climax, to hand? Yeah. yeah. Isn't this just like worse? Than yeah, it's just it, way, Anastasia way, and way Amelia. Let, let me let me be the uh, the spicy dissenter for once. You know, never happens. And point out that um, this card does do additional things. Uh, I mentioned it in the last video, but this card um, it, it does break even. You you're not minusing a card because he does pop to your hand. Um, also, he puts their character on top of their deck. So it's confirming additional damage, denying Encore, etc. Um, I, I don't think that makes it worth it. I, I still think yeah, no, I was about to say, but... it's like, does that, made it, does that make it any better? I think the answer is no. No, really. it, it makes it a quote-unquote actual finisher, but... I don't even consider a these a finisher. I, I consider these kinds of effects, like the Amelia, the Anastasia, like, th I feel like these are last-ditch outs by grindy decks to win the game. Like... Like, I, I think ReZero employs this style of card, like, better than anyone. And I don't think that Overlord, like, especially when you have to dedicate this many cards. You have to run this shitty 1-0. And you can't just run one of it, like ReZero can. Because, like, ReZero no, can, like... Yeah. ReZero can, like... I mean, like, I don't know. If, if anybody's been watching the White Sports Invitational, or, like, you've watched, like, Christian Yarbacher play from uh, Strictly Broken, or, like, anybody's, like, playing ReZero... Like, the big thing is, like, you, like, play one puck, and then your felt searches your puck, and then your felt puts puck into grave. So, like, you only have to run one of the card to do it, and, like, Overlord can't get away with that. Because you don't have a way to, like, set this card. So you have to run, like, two to three of it to have it be in your grave, and you'd have to mill out. There's too yeah, many conditions. I don't master's kind of the same way. It, you don't really have the direct way to search it, but... The, the floor on the card's a lot higher. It's just like a perfectly acceptable 1-0 to kill something with. Where this green card has a bunch of drawbacks, I think. Yeah. If I correctly. This is just... I think it goes to the bottom of deck when it gets reversed, right? Yeah, it does a bunch of terrible shit. It's like Puck Jr., yeah. No, all your characters can't side attack. 
which is really bad considering this card. Wait, no, that's so bad. Wait a second. So, what if your opponent? What if this attack sends your opponent to three six, and your other lane is a side, and you can't side attack anymore, and you're forced to overswing. That's gross. Awful, this is like a ugh, against your attacks. Well, no, you can't because like you want to get this side for one, right? You want to confirm this one damage, right? You're trying but to you can't. So that you can decide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not allowed, yeah. yeah, I hate everything about this. I hate everything about this card. Actually, this, the, the more we talk about it, the less I like it. Yeah, it's, it's way too restrictive. The card that it changes into is bad. The fact that you can only put it in the lane that this card was in, <laughs> and it's really overcosted. Uh, yeah, I agree. I don't like it. You're yeah. probably just better off running the um TD combo, the, the new like, yeah. it, like just running the empty gate TD combo and yeah. off finishers. The off finisher seems better than this. In yeah. this case, you'd be better off playing just an empty gate and no other combo than this card. Yeah, this is really bad. Not a fan. All right, let's just let's look at a different card. <laughs> Here you go, Tyler. All right. Uh... Bonus cards placed from hand to stage, pay the cost, which is ditch one. If so, choose Shooting Star in your waiting room, return to hand. And also, when this card is placed on stage from hand, uh, pay the cost, which is another ditch one. And uh, you get Falling Down, so it's a bond for both of the events. Double event bond, interesting. All right, so the 3-3 three, three event, event, I'll read these to you. 3-3 three, three event is choose one and perform it. Deal two, it's a 3-3. Three, three. Deal two to your opponent. Deal to uh, put this card into your memory, or give one of your characters 8k cross turn. That's the 3-3. Three, three. Let me read the other one before we go, ooh, or eh. Um, the 1-0 is, if you have a card in your memory, you can't play this event. Wait. If you have a card in your memory, you cannot play this event. Okay. 1-0. Put this into memory. Recollection. At the beginning of your draw phase, if this card is in your memory, put the top card of your library to memory face down. If you have four or more face down cards in your memory, move all cards in your memory to waiting room. If five or more cards are moved to the waiting room by this effect, deal two to your opponent. Oh, that is such a meme. <laughs> you're blind you're blind memorying cards at the beginning. So you play this card and it's just a neg one. It just goes to memory. Right? And then every turn after that, you put a card from the top of your deck into your memory face down. Um, and the second you hit four or more cards in your memory, so four turns later, uh, all cards hit waiting room. And if five or more cards, so like including this card and the four other cards, then you just get deal two. Because actually, there's some real tricky wording on this card. So the intended way it's supposed to work is like, if any of you are familiar with Suspend from Magic, yeah, Basically, it's supposed to be really suspend four at a, yeah. at a severe discount because you're waiting so many turns. Right. So like a, a, a zero cost burn two is fantastic, but um, it's like suspend broken, four is but you you, dumb. Have to, you have to wait for a long time. But actually, the wording on this card says uh, if you have four or more face down cards in your memory, move this to waiting room. It doesn't say wait four turns. It says well, there's no way if to generate you have face four down. Or more cards. There's no way to generate face down unless you're playing into Persona 5 and Persona 5 gives you a face down card. That's the only way to generate an additional card. Face down. In English. Because uh, it has to be face down. Yeah, them. you couldn't put like any of these other cards into memory. Yeah, there's no other cards in the set that put face down cards in your memory. I think what kills Overlord, it for Overlord this... Overlord doesn't have a way to send its own cards face down? Or... Yeah, they don't. Hmm. It, I don't, I, I don't even think it's even the idea that like if this is a suspend four, right? Or no, it's suspend five, counting the turn it's played. How, how does suspend tick down your next upkeep? At, at start of your turn, it ticks down. Okay, so suspend four is how you'd read this, right? Um, it's the fact that it's blind, blind memorying stuff from the top of your deck. Like that, that's just like, all right, cards unplayable. Like you can't play that card. Like th blind card from top of deck to memory is like so much worse than blind to any other zone. Dude, I, for all the standard players out there, there has to be a way to break this card by like combining <laughs> sets. Oh yeah, standard. I'm sure. It, right? This is like probably <laughs> super broken. I don't wait. Know is uh, that format, but is Persona is Schwartz, right? Yes. Do they put face down cards into your own memory? 
I don't want to talk about standard no, though. No, okay, I, so, I don't think so. <laughs> so here's here's what this card that we're actually looking at does, this this double blonder, right? It bonds to the three three event. How good is the three three event? The three three what? event sounds pretty dank as like a two of It looks it sounds fun. I've never tried it on uh I know Drew runs like two of this card. He runs like a two two split. Or like he maybe runs, a one two split. He runs the bonder too? Yeah, he runs like one other one or two of the bonder and like two of this event. I don't think you ever want to do the 8k cross turn. No. It's it's definitely you either heal to or burn to. The I think 3-3 three, three, heal to send this to memory is like... That's fine. That's... It's... It's no fate heal event, but it's fine. <laughs> I, I think it's very situational. In which yeah, I, I think the fact that it has two modes, right, effectively, makes it fine. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Eight K is a mode. Maybe you want to like not get reversed by something, or like maybe they have a Reinhardt. You really need to get over it. Well, the Reinhardt so, can just run out of. The yeah, way. the Reinhardt can just run out of the way. Reinhardt runs to any position at the beginning of your opponent's attack phase. Oh uh, well, fuck. I don't. Yeah, know. there's no. To be, see, the thing about Reinhardt is that there's scenario. there's no out to Reinhardt. <laughs> he like it, it was it was funny. I was like making the rush rundown, and it, I was on the like outs to this card, and I was like, there's no outs to this card. <laughs> like you just deal with it. Yeah. yeah. I like this card though. I'm gonna give it. Yeah, a I mean, I I think that the fact that you have a bonder to this three three that's pretty situational that you like don't always want to sculpt for or don't always want to like hold. Yeah, it in your hand. The fact that you can like run two or three of it if you have the slots and grab it, it like makes it fine. I'll give it like a B minus because it's a or you know what? I'm gonna give it a C plus because the second card is unplayable that it bonds no, to. I'm gonna It'll be it a, funny. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a B plus because it also bonds to the second card, and the second card is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You're, you're you're losing points in like your stats. To get the ability to bond to that second card. Well, it is a zero two K, right? It's a double bond. It's a two K. That's fine. yeah, yeah. But if if you're not utilizing the second half of the bond, you could ditch out power. You're, you could you're double ditch, something dude. For no reason. You could yeah, just double ditch. Though. It is a double ditch if you're if you absolutely if you're like completely like fucked. Yeah, yeah. I it is losing five hundred power for the fact that it bonds to the useless event. I agree. That's true. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's I move still on. Don't, I still don't hate it, though. No, it's yeah, fine. it's fine. Uh, no one waste their time on this 102k. Really important that this deck has one because it is a deck that wants to hold board and be a standby deck. Let's not waste time. 2k backup, very important. Not every set gets a 2k backup these days, so... Uh, it's a privilege, yeah. Yeah, it's a privilege in the English. Al meta. Albedo is very handsome. Yeah. It's points for me. Oh, dang, the SP on that's really nice, though. I'm scrolling through on... Hotsea.com. And... Yeah, Drew Ooh, has Drew has the foil of this card. Looks really good. I good incentive to max rarity, Overlord. If you like the show, it was two one. No, oh, of the the counter. There's a really the counter. sweet sweet other art for the counter. Take a look. As far as the two one, we got um, Albedo's sweet disgrace. Uh, she's a frontal five hundred time a frontal level assist five hundred times the level of the character. Uh, you can rest her, choose one of your Ein's Transcendentals, which is the Ein's finisher that sucks, and it gets 2,500 power, and it bonds to that shitty Ein's by discarding a card from your hand. This is just worse than, like, yeah, the one that bonds to the Demures, that bonds to the better combo, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or I mean, changes into it, or something. Yeah, we've seen at least two other better level assists than this, this bond, this bond yeah, to... Yeah, I don't even, I don't want to waste add, too much time on this. Add card, yeah. There's a, there's a much Fine. cooler this card. card. No, don't blame Albedo. It's not Albedo's fault Ainz sucks. <laughs> this is, if, if Ainz wasn't so shit, this would be D a great plus, card. D+, because it's a level <laughs> assist. I mean, like, yeah, if it targeted any other card, right? Yeah, level right. assist and I saw also didn't give it a The Ainz is good. I mean, it's not her fault. Alright, let's not talk really about a... a cooler card. Yeah. Not really a fan of Disney. I like this card. Right. I like this card. Alright, Brian. <laughs> this is Shaltier, Guardian's Heart. Uh, on play, you may pay one. If so, search your deck for up to one copy of this card and put it on the stage, or in any slot on the stage, and shuffle your deck. So it's got the Karumi multiply itself effect. And when it attacks, you may pay one. If the gate is in your climax area, you can pay the cost one stock. If you do, it gets... When damage dealt by this card is not cancelled, heal three. So... 
it only can summon in one additional copy of itself. However, uh, oh, you're right. If yeah, you I'm get hit to like an absurdly high amount of damage, right, and you are otherwise sculpted, you could side into a level three. Oh, you're right. You deal zero. Your and opponent takes three. zero damage, heal three. I believe that's is, how that works. Is, is that how that works? I, I believe don't think so. so. I think you have to deal at least one damage for it to be is not. That, yeah, I'm not exactly sure how damage dealt by this. I feel like when this card comes in English, that will be in like parentheses. No, um, well, it's pushy road. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, I, I'm not exactly sure how this is. I'm if you can, if you I'm, can even then, it, it if you can side. It has to be considered at least one damage for it to be canceled. Mm -hmm. I'm almost positive. Th that would be my impression as well. Well, for but this even not that... to be canceled. Zero yeah, but... wasn't canceled. Yeah, zero not canceled. I, not I, I yeah, yeah, I'm not exactly sure how this is worded. I, I guess. I'm, I'm going to... However, gonna like, say... if your opponent leaves a level one or a level two on the board against you, and you play this, this is a heal three. Yeah, you, could, just... you could still side probably. Yeah, yeah and, and you do it up front, right? Like, you, I love you, this card. Yeah, you know if you're going to do it. Like... This it's, card is sick. This card is good because it dupes itself and it's on a good trigger, and it's a card that like gets you out of bad situations. Yeah, so like the effect, the effect is cheap. Yeah, it's like. But a. I yeah, don't think a. it's that good. I think it's very I situational, think it's fun, and it's fun, and it's a good card. All right, get this. You guys, you stand by this. It out. doesn't do anything you else on play. You have yeah, to play the combo. Yeah, you're healing a level two. Ooh. It's gate standby. <laughs> Ooh, come on! I, I feel like I feel like I feel like that's a. meme as fuck. Actually, like I, I'm gonna give it a B plus, but I I do like the idea of this card. A lot. Carmen, you do like healing at level two. I do like you healing at level two. About it. That is yeah, too meme. Is broken. That's this too like meme for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't summon the other one if you Dude, stand by. Oh, it. You no, you can't, but you still... You yeah, you, and yeah, you only... only yeah. No, you can't. It's oh, an man, auto. Yeah. yeah. It's, um... You're one heal three at level two. I, the fact that it only... It doesn't... The wording means that it's not when it's placed from hand to stage or or deck. means that you yeah. can't summon a full field of it. Two, makes yeah. it kind of whatever. The no, fact no, that you... You don't necessarily need a whole field, though. The fact you? that you have to pay up front... Well, no, you don't. I'm saying... You're the, either killing them or you're healing and living. Because, right, if, if, they're, if you're not getting... This the is only an 11k. It has no on... It's a finisher with no on play effect, and you have to call your shot for this um, beforehand. But it's a better finisher than... I think we're before. assuming a lot. Yeah. Well, okay, it's here's the other the thing. Eyes. Imagine this. You're in fucking Swiss rounds. At um, I don't know, like White Plains, right? You're in Swiss pounds, Swiss rounds at White Plains, <laughs> and um, <laughs> fuck, you're in Swiss town. <laughs> Swiss town. <laughs> you're in Swiss rounds at White Plains, and you're playing against like an absolute mouth breather, like no idea what they're doing, right? This card does no nothing knows. against that player because that player will crash board every single turn. You will overswing, and they will cancel because they're a god. And then your card doesn't do it. You're running a card that doesn't do anything. So I think this card is good against... This card is much better against good players. Um, or players that are good enough to, like, try to win field, but not good enough to, like, not field level twos and ones going into their opponent's, like, kill turn. I could totally see myself, like... It's also off of gate. So, like, instead of running the TD Ein's Bomb, I feel like I'd rather just... Maybe run this and have like an action. You run like unquote, three of it. You like run three of it. Well, it's not really a finisher. You run. It's it's like a. It li and this it card has no value. Another turn. This card yeah. has no value fielded at. Uh, honestly, like if you're if you go into your turn at any less than three three, this card sucks. Um, because it just is three costs for two two souls, which you could play the uh. Albedo, uh, or Albedo, like, um, early play, pitch a card, heal a stock, and then play another card, so it's three stock, two bodies. Actually, actually, there's a good bit of clocking effects in this set, like, clock Rickies and shit like that, where you could, like, clock for turn, maybe you have a damage floating already, and then, like, 
Yeah, I, I, I'm not discounting push that. To a refresh, like get your clock for turn, get yourself into a refresh point, and then like do a clock rickier. Yeah, this this that. card is like really dank when you like take your refresh point, then heal afterwards. But like, I I think these are plays that you will only get against like players of like moderate to higher skill, and in a tournament setting, you have to like trudge through people that like unfortunately have no idea what they're doing. And this card doesn't do anything against those players because it doesn't well, even heal. Well, neither play. do any of your other finishers, though. Um, That's but the thing. They do. They wall up more than this card. They heal on play. They at least can trip. This card has no relevant on play effect other than dupe itself. Paying one to copy itself is a plus. Well, one. no, I said you could if you wanted to play two, three soul, two two soul beaters for three stock. You could just play your early play on your level three turn. But then you have to ditch a card. You're nagging one. I mean, sure. Like, I, I don't want to argue about this forever. I, I think it's very cute, and I think it's much better, like, in the meme situations where you stand by this out of two and, like, heal, like, down to, like, 2-2 two, two or some shit from, like, 2-5. Like, that's dank as fuck. Um, and it's better against good players. Yeah. Um, but, like, it falls off in the like, greater Swiss environment is what I'm trying to say, right? Like, against people I mean, I mean, who, like, I don't think it. I don't think it's a great finisher, shit. but I don't think Overlord's designed to have a great finisher. I, I agree. I well, agree. it does have a really good finisher. It's just in blue. Yeah. But, um, like, the, the red-green standby yeah, deck. Yeah, the red-green yeah. standby deck, yeah. I know what you're saying. It's cool that it's in red, and it's cool that it's on door. I think if it was on any other trigger, like, if it was on Stocksaw, I'd be like, I don't give a shit. Like, I just don't you, care. You know what, though? I like that it gives you a choice, though, because um, all three of the... It lets you call your shot ahead of time. Can, not necessarily that, but, like, in deck building. Like, since all three finishers are off of gate, right? Yeah, you get it, to it's choose. It's not like you're choosing between, like, do I want to run gate or something else? Like, you, you Well, you have two gate, options. You get to run the then, TD one or this, and if you run the other one, you're just fucking up. Yeah, yeah, I guess, but you know... <laughs> We, we could, I guess that's the point. All right, let's move on. Um, <laughs> we got this testicle. Uh, at the beginning of your attack phase, uh, you could pay oh one sack this. Dude, what the choose fuck one of your this? opponent's characters and gets show. minus one soul for the turn. What um, the fuck this is, is this? like a ball sack. <laughs> this card is a. Is, this is a ball sack with eyes. Um, Victim guardian of the eighth level. <laughs> this effect sucks. I read. I read this like for a second. I said, "Like, wait, is this a JC?" It's like, nope. This card's bad. Wait, this card has another effect. This card's a frontal assist five hundred. Oh, uh, thanks, Hotsy. Yeah, sorry, Daddy Luke. Come on. Yeah, this is this still sucks even with no, the five hundred. That's it's well, it's assist, better. so it's five hundred frontal, right? I, I don't yeah, think globals I, have assist. D plus for frontal five hundred. No. Yeah. Yeah. Now the keyword's in bold. It's frontal assist. Yeah, is there assist. some other way to potentially get into this, like a bond effect or a? Um... Mm -mm. I doubt it. No bonds to ball sack. <laughs> Onwards. At least he can sack itself. Onwards sack and <laughs> Yeah, he can. Sack he can take sack. himself out yeah, of this sack world. Sack. <laughs> sack the sack. He can sack. <laughs> Very clever. All right, Tyler. This is you. All right. Uh, when this spot, when this becomes reversed, if the level of your battle opponent is zero or lower, reverse it and choose one of your heteromorphic race or Nazareth characters, and character gets twenty five hundred. By that's an act it. sack it. Act sack it. Act sack to give twenty five hundred, and it's a bomb. Uh, so if your opponent, I don't like if, it. If at your all. opponent lets it live because they don't want to trade with it because it's a bomb. People don't do that anymore. Into your standby turn. Yeah, th then something. you get to then you get to neg yourself. People don't anywhere. do that anymore, dude. Yeah. Like nobody really runs bombs all that much. Well, anymore, it's not right? even that. I think people realize it's just like you just fucking trade with your opponent's bond with a utility card that you already got come and play value on, and then your opponent goes minus one. Like if the card yeah. didn't live cross turn, you just like don't let your opponent like plus off a bomb anymore. You just fucking run them over. Like that was like. I don't even think that was ever a thing. I think that was literally just bad play, unlike most people. Like, like thinking that bombs were had evasion in this game. They don't. 
You just fucking run that shit over, and you go one. Like, I mean, you, plus you just go this one, is one. this is just a uh, a reverse the character too. It's not yeah bo bottom deck clock swap. Yeah, not even a hard bomb. Yeah, not even not even hard. Event move, sucks. So I don't like, like it. this card sucks. I can't give this D mine. I hate it. Not a fan. We, ta we talked before about like coincidentally decent standby targets, though, right? Like. You don't yeah, really have anything sure. you want to stand by out. You could like pull this out and then next turn. But this isn't a field boost. backup. This isn't a field backup and the standby like the standby no, combo. It's, it's like conserving your plus for later though. That's well, yeah, I'm at. saying like the standby build doesn't require reverse for its combo. It's just on play stand it's like on climax play stand to standby character. So the twenty five hundreds are relevant, yeah. Yeah, and they don't have eight, they only have like one standby. So it's just like there's just no value in it, I don't think. Maybe in the yellow decks where you need reverse. Maybe. Yeah, but then you're not maybe, jamming maybe standby. You want, maybe you want a red fix for the red early play. But then you just run the bomb. Or know, not the bomb. No, you run the brainstorm. You just run the brainstorm and 2k yeah. backups because you're also walling up with the yellow combo. Yeah, so I you mean, still run the, 2k uh, backups in that deck, I think. Yeah, the behind's level 0 too, the double rare. And red. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, don't, I, I don't think you play this. Yeah, this card sucks. Next, Andy's wrapped around. Got Ein's true booty. Tr wait, true body. Jesus. When this card's placed from hand to stage, you can pay the cost. Choose a character with either heteromorphic race or Nazarick in your waiting room to drop salve drop climax salvage. It's important to have one in your set. Uh, okay. and it's in irrelevant color, so um it's, it's fine. Uh, yeah, it's you you run these if you need a slot and you need grave access. Uh, exactly. if, you, if you need it, you play it. It's that yeah, I, I don't even want to... It's like it's fine slash C. Like, I, I don't even want to give it a C because like I think it's better than that, but like it's literally just like a deck building choice. It's like, do I need red? Do I need this card? Do it's I, like, a nice filtering choice. I, like, I, am I, playing I like pants, these cards if you're, uh, like, if you're running pants or bar. Pants, bar, yeah. That will add that's what I'm say. your hand. It's like fine. It's in irrelevant color, which makes it more important. Like if this card was in blue, I'd be like, okay, yeah, this is like a C minus, like whatever. But it's like it's in red, which fixes for an early place. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, right. that's you, Brian. Yeah. Let's move on. Shaltier, a woman's fight. If your opponent has two or less stock, this gets fifteen hundred power. I hate it. This is I, an F tier card. Yeah, you, have, you have no control over yeah. whatever, when it gets power. I'm not a fan. What I hate about it is that your opponent literally outs this card by tri fielding you. Yeah, Something you, they're you, probably you doing into, you anyway. Force them into a tri field though. You bait them mm -hmm. into a tri field, then you triple reverse them. What if they went first? They only have to attack twice, which they want to do anyway. And all but you have not is doing any. They're not playing a Ricky. They're not using their stock turn one either. If they're playing a Ricky, they try field you anyway, because yeah, they plus their card. Your, your opponent just controls the power of this card on their turn by trigger. Yeah, like if your opponent plays Ricky, this is like okay. This is a, like you just minus. It sucks because your opponent plus one. They have no reason to not commit a third card to the board. If your opponent's not playing Ricky, they slam two cards and kill it, and then you're probably stuck at level zero still. You don't have a follow-up play. Card sucks. I guess you are kind of just banking on your opponent playing poorly. Yeah. Which isn't, yeah. A, isn't a good a, strategy. For not a it's, to especially do, yeah. when there are just better cards to play, like the fucking 3k coin flip. <laughs> like, 3k coin flip's ten times better than this card. Uh, I mean, speaking of coin flip, that would be the the, random red, the random red card to stand by off of yeah. standby. Out of that other card we were just talking about. If you want a random plus level zero, but anyway, mm -hmm. let's let's move on. Uh, we got this Shaltier here. It's a one hundred two k battle opponent of your. When another of your characters is reversed, choose one of your heteromorphic race or Nazareth. Okay, so revenge plus fifteen, and then act. Put a vampire bride from your waiting room to your clock. This can be activated up to three times per turn. Draw one card. Oh, it's the bad card. Oh, okay. This is this is. Hmm. This is, um, uh, so the first effect is the good part. Let's just, let's just get that out of the way right now. The second part is, like, meme. So when another character reverses a character, you get to give something 1,500. You know what, you know when the second part is good? If you, if drawing three, if you're totally completely out, and drawing three cards, you have three of these in your braiding room, put, and you're at one three, and drawing three cards puts you to 1-6 refresh. That's when this is fine. 
and even then, what the actual fuck? Why? I, I, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, here's, here's the reason here's why. why. Imagine all the times you played standby, and you're like, "Dang it, I'm at like one six. If only I had one more point of damage, I could stand by a stronger card." Well, you wouldn't like, because you would stand by Cocutus because it's the strongest card in your deck, and that's a two two. Well, maybe you're. I don't fucking know, Carmen. I mean, there's situations where you might. I know you're playing you. Devil's Advocate. I'm just trying to shut it down because I think the revenge, uh. the revenge trigger is cool. Like, I think if you're like in red at one and you're like playing the Shelter Bomb or whatever, like, and you want to like protect something else, fifteen hundred revenge trigger is fine. Like, and maybe you build around I, that. I don't think. I don't think it's revenge trigger. It's no, like when, so. when you I, kill one of their characters. Yeah, when you're when you. Oh, am I reading this as wrong? Oh, yeah, I sound like an idiot now. Sorry, yeah. everyone. Yeah, it's a bad Carmen's card. a dumbass. Can't cancel everything. Um, battle put another. Yeah, it's, it's card more sucks. of like a snowball y Minami. Yeah, effect. don't like it. Yeah, we hate it. Hey, speak for yourself. I kind of like it, actually. Okay. And I, ironically, I, I, I hate it. It is yep. well. I'm speaking for myself. Uh, card sucks. <laughs> I, I think that <laughs> there, there's a lot of deck building, interesting deck building things you could do with this. And the I only guess. concession is like running four suiciders that pump twenty five hundred, which is like not a huge drawback. Uh, sure. Yeah. Well, you could sack them to buff something else, <laughs> then put yeah, it into your dude, clock. They, yeah, put them in your waiting room. Sack it. Put it in your waiting room. Then put it in your clock. And then draw a card. Broken. And draw a card. Oh, and then Super. you and then you stand by out the level three and you heal three. You heal the three you just clocked, and then you do it again <laughs> the next time. <laughs> Shaltier waifu only. Um, next. All right. Uh, this is a two three that gets minus two levels on stage and gets a thousand for every other Nazarek or heteromorphic race, and it's a three soul. Oh, it dies to that bad level zero reverse we were just looking at. Yeah. Yeah. This card sucks. <laughs> it dies to everything. Like you, you just cocute us over this every time. This is like is a meme card. Why would you play a, this over the big cock? F. This sits a twelve five three soul though. F plus for memes. We love Akihiko Kaiba. Oh, this card is worse <laughs> than Akihiko Kaiba by a considerable Kaiba. margin. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think it's back around the top right. Andy, yeah. All right, Butler with alarm. Is he's on the clock? Get it. Discard oh, a card okay. from your hand of waiting room. Pay one. When you play him, pay one, discard a card. If you do, choose a character in your waiting room, add it to your hand. So, drop salvage. Drop, drop, drop salvage. And alarm, start your climax phase, draw a card, discard a card. Uh, I, I, I hate it. I really don't like it. Yeah, the fact that... Uh, well, I mean, like, I don't know if you need a drop salvage, but the alarm is, like, worthless. Yeah, I mean... I, don't I you guess have a probably... salvage brainstorm? Like notably, I guess notably, you do the draw discard before you place your climax, so you could like dump your standby target that way. I I guess, I guess if if you like desperately need, this is a worse drop salvage than normal, so I'm gonna give it a C minus. Like, but if you need drop salvage, you're in it. It's like a bad I, niche card. It, it, it's really meh. It's like uh, uh, the alarm effect could be useful in a pinch to get your standby target in the waiting room, but. Yeah, it's it's taking too big a power hit, I think. The fact that yeah. it's 500 power is not relevant ever. Hey, drop salvages are just waiting room Ricky that don't plus. Yeah, I mean, sure. Yep. You're right. Next card. Um, right, you got the penguin. Got the penguin. Uh, 65. Eclair, assistant butler. Uh, on play, choose a card in your opponent's clock, put it into their waiting room, put the top card of their deck into their clock. When you refresh, put this into your stock. The worst out to Love Live Sunshine ever. Because <laughs> it, it comes on too late after they've played Yo. Well, you get a free stock when Yo uh, inevitably makes you Pushes refresh you to refresh? I, I'm doing to you. <laughs> you get a free stock. When Yo burns the fuck out of you. You get a free stock. Yeah, I hate it. It's, F. Uh, it's These cards like, are so bad. It's just yeah. like really awkward, like the combination of effects on it. I mean, like, it's what is it, Andy? Anything. Don't don't you play a card like this in Rene, but it has a much. It's the it's the brainstormer, right? 
Yeah, it's well, a yeah, brainstormer. The, cause, cause, uh, and it top level, checks, right? Level one or two, you're trying to upgrade your back row, so the brainstormer pops into your stock potentially. And it like coin flips to pop into your stock on refresh, right? This is like, there's no condition for it to go to stock, but like the first effect's fucking garbage. Yeah. I mean, I mean, generally when you run a card like this, you want it to go to stock. You you like the fact that it automatically is going to stock. Potentially, you're denying a reverse with it. You could be. Um, yeah, but this card before doesn't the battle step. Before the battle step, by the way, before it could become reversed, it would put itself in stock. If you refresh, yes. Um, if you do this with like few cards left in your deck, um, I, I just think the thing Carmen said, like the timing of the clock condition, is really unfortunate. Yeah, it doesn't actually out anything. Because uh, if if it was like during your opponent's turn or like at a relevant timing, it could actually be like, you know, maybe usable. Uh, it, it could be actually a good card, but. Doesn't do it just shit. really really doesn't work when you need it to work. All right, let's move on. Uh, we got this Albedo. Uh, I believe this is a good card. Okay, when this card is placed from your hand to the stage, move the top card of your library to the waiting room, which is just mill one. I don't know why it's worded so weirdly. Uh, if so, choose one of your heteromorphic race or Nazareth characters, and for each soul trigger on the card, move to your waiting room for the turn that character gets one soul. So in the standby deck, you move any card with a soul trigger or a standby climax. You give a character a soul, so it like turns your top card into additional soul to your board before you go to attacks. Um, notably, not a lot of ways to set your top card, but we can get into that when we talk about the card. The other part is when the climax is placed in your hand, the climax zone, you may pay cost to return this card to your hand, so you bounce it, choose one of your characters, and give it a thousand power cross turn. Uh, very good for standby. Helps your uh, two one eins sit at a much higher power, like, easily defendable power level, which will be a 8k. So you'll have the Cocutus at 10.5, and then this at 8k. Um, really cool about this card returning to your hand, and to get the iron standing stuff, you can field this card in the front row, so that you don't have to, like, cloud up your back row and stand by a card out there, although you can do that. Um, and you can play it with uh, Door as well. You just need extra power. Uh, the timing of this card is very good, and if you're playing standby, you run, like, 2 to 3 of this card easily. Uh, it's a really, think? really insane synergy. Uh, it, it outs the problem of running uh, standby, like you get, not you get pushing push, you get soul. Push soul damage. You get to. Uh, it just has perfect synergy with like the it, way it, you it play level one. Perfectly with standby, but is it worth running like? It's the level one because you want to see one of it at level one. Like you want this card as a part of your like level one god board. Because you're like not only pushing soul, but you're making your eins pretty much unreversible, mm -hmm. unless your opponent slams in early play. If they get pushed to level two, which is like they're unlikely to, because you're playing standby, even with with this one extra soul, but like your opponent's likely at one another turn, and then they have to crash into Kukutis and eins because of this card. It just has value all game. I don't know. That's like a little too cute. I don't think so. I think this card is um. Is it, well, is Andy, even today, we were playing, like, like I, was, level zero. Well, I was playing a very similar card to this in Data Live today, Andy, and that card's, like, dumb. These, like, these cards with standby are very good. It, it, it did something else, though, too, right? No, what it does exactly do? the same second effect. What was the first effect? Uh, tap to, uh, tap to, like, search brainstorm. Which is better than this card. But, yeah. however, the first effect does have, like, perfect synergy with standby. Because there are cards that, like, reveal top, and then you, like, mill it, the it soul. Reminds me a lot of, uh, it reminds me a lot of the uh, Silica from Standby Switch. Yeah. But um, I, I like that that card had an actual, like, climax combo where you could actually, like, draw mm, plus off of it. I think this card is extremely important for the deck. I think this is a big reason why, like, running four standby doesn't feel bad. Because the big problem with running four standby is, like, you're not getting... Only running four standbys, like, you're not getting the full value of playing standby. There's, like, an eight standby lineup. So this makes that less bad by also allowing you to push soul. Aren't oh. you supposed to be direct attacking anyway? Why do you want additional soul? Uh, it goes on your 2-1-9s. So it makes you swing 2-2-2-2-1 two, 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 at minimum, as mm -hmm. opposed to 1-2-1, one, one, which at level 1 is, like, a significant difference on first deck. This card's really important. It, even You'd play this card even if it had a much worse effect for the first effect and only had the second effect as perfect synergy with how you play I, I your level know. one. I, I just can't help comparing it to Silica, though. 
It just doesn't do enough. Silica is very different. Like, Silica is very extremely different than this card. Silica pluses. This card bounces back to your hand, goes even, and gives a meaningful effect to your board. This card's very important for the deck. For any deck playing standby. Very good. I, you would play this in any deck running X standby, I think. At at least two. This card's very important. I think, I think it's more of a flex spot. You could turn this into... Mm. Something else. How much have you like played against Drew playing this deck? Once. Okay. Maybe twice. This um, this card is absurdly powerful in the deck. It's a real. It's a big reason why the level one uh, spike of two one eins two two Cocutus, uh can be as powerful as it is because they get to preserve their back row cards, uh, whatever those might be. Whether they be supports, I don't know. I just don't like it. You're like adding this conditional third piece. No, 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 no. Combo. Listen, let me let me finish my point. You don't need it um, for the combo, but if you do, this card goes to the front row. It's popped to your hand. Cocutus comes into this card slot. Your Eins is at eight k. Your Cocutus is at ten five. You have some other lane. You added this card to hand, and then your Eins is swinging for two. Your Cocutus is swinging for two, and your other lane is swinging for one. That's much better than 1-2-1. One, 2-2-1 two, one. Two, two, one is much better than 1-2-1 one, one on first deck. That's, like, very significant. I mean, I get it. I mean, I totally yeah. get like, the damage numbers and the scrying and, you know... It's the fact... And then you just keep whatever. playing this card. Every single... Well, here's the thing with Overlord, too. Every, I, I just I just don't like that it takes up a spot that I could use for a different utility card at zero. That would I, use I think this card is... If, you're, effect, if you're playing standby, this card is the utility card you want to see. 100% of the time. I would run this over pretty much any other utility card that wasn't, like, a Brainstorm. If I was choosing between this and a Brainstorm, I'd choose, like, a... a like, if I, I could only run three Brainstorms, and I was between, like, three of this, three of a Brainstorm, I would run three Brainstorm. Uh, comparing it to any other card in the Overlord list, I would run more of this card. This card's really, really fucking important for the deck. Uh, like, playing against it and playing the deck, this card's extremely important. It's a big reason why uh, the deck was, like, played at all, until it got power crept by eight standby decks. Uh, this card's absurd uh, for the deck. Really, really important. I, I don't mean to like stone roll and just say like no over and over, but like your your like knee jerk reaction. I'm just saying is like I, I think it's like misplaced. This card's a super 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 fucking important. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm deck. not the only one who you know has that reaction to it. And maybe like in practice, maybe maybe it plays better than it reads. But, I mean, um, how many other than silica? How many bounce back to hand cards you need? Because I feel like silica sucks. I hate playing silica in uh, standby sword art decks. In fact, to the point where I don't run Silica anymore in any deck that I run standby in. In standby Silica. Oh, I like Silica a lot. That was think one of my the, favorite parts of the deck. <laughs> I think the card does absolutely nothing for like the floor and the ceiling of the deck. All it does is overplus you and cause you to ditch cards. Because the deck already uh, preserves hand and has more than enough deck manipulation without the card. Um, whereas this card, every time you play it, you are increasing the soul power of your board nullifying the uh, you have a chance to nullify the drawback of playing four standbys as opposed to playing eight standbys because you're not putting out two soul beaters as often and you want to hold your standby for level one Carmen this just sounds like the argument we usually have except like the roles are reversed right you're wanting to run like the spicier card that's good in this like, is not a spicy XYZ card scenario, and this I'm the is, one telling you why don't this you card is good every score? single time you play a standby Every single time you are playing a standby in your hand, this card Every hits the board. Every single time you're playing a standby in your four standby deck. Yes, this card no hits the board. To add more standbys to your hand, such as what are you game. talking about? You have a completely broken uh, climax swap. Every single climax that comes into your hand is a standby climax, provided you have a grave. That's a real thing. Overlord does. You have to like pay resources for that or something. It's not free. It's one like any climax swap. What you do to put out a two-two. To put like, out that on play, like on play, you discard it. a card and make a. We already looked at it. Hand. No, it's pay one, drop a climax, add a climax. Every time you draw a climax, it becomes a standby. It's really important. This card is not fringe at all. This card is staple, like a hundred percent. Two to three of this card, every single deck you play standby in, hundred percent. Cards unbelievably know. good. What, what do you? What do the other? Other two think Brian Tyler. Yeah, so so my my initial reaction was closer to you, Andy, 
but I, I mean, I, I get where Carmen's coming from. I get why you'd play this card, but it just seems dead in so many situations where I can't see myself, if I were building Overlord for the first time, running more than two of this card. But that may just be to me, due to me having lack of exposure playing against the set. I mean, you want to see one of it. Every additional copy is a neg. Yeah. You want one copy of it at hand. So two is completely fine if you need to jam for other cards. I'm saying, like, if you're playing standby, you're running this card. At like I agree. two, I mean, like if you're I mean, playing that's standby, that's all I'm saying. If you're playing standby, you're running this card. I'm just also putting it out there that this card removes the drawback of playing four standbys in a deck because you're not getting as much value, but you're getting additional soul and you're holding board in an additional lane in a deck where you're playing a two one that early plays at level one, which we're going to talk about in three cards here. And making that card practically unreversible, because your opponent, even with this additional soul, is not favored to go to level 2. Unless you push them for damage early, in which you probably should not have pushed them for damage early in this deck. Because you wanted your opponent to stay at 1 for an additional turn, so that they had to crash, so that you got additional value off of an additional Cocutus. To steamroll harder. Like, I think for the deck strategy, the card is completely invaluable, because of how it plays the level 1 game. And it has value for every single Climax coming into your hand. Because you turn every Climax that comes into your hand into a standby. Using the Climax Swap. Because the Climax Swap's really fucking good. Maybe maybe my opinion will change when we get to the 2-1 in a few cards. Yeah. Alright, we can move on. I've shilled for this card enough. I know that Drew would be mad at me if I didn't argue with all of you about this card. So I had to do it justice. I, I, I agreed that it was good. I just have nothing else to say. You pretty much made my point, too. Alright. Well, you got this one, Tyler. All right. Uh, what's this card called? Bo Skeleton. Bone Man. Bone Man. Yeah, Bone Man. Man. Ines, true ability. Uh, for each other, and heteromorphic race and other characters, it gets 500 power. So broken. Wow. Oh, good. So eh. Basically, a vanilla. Yeah. I don't want to talk about 1065s. If you if you need a red 1065 in your deck, you can play this card. Yeah, you definitely always have a full field in Overlord if you're playing like any of the red shit. So like, sure. Yeah, red, red is too good to ever run this card. I know I've seen Drew like run this card, but like I think it's I think it's just straight worse than the Shelter Bomb. The Shelter Bomb is like broken. I would never run this as my auxiliary one. I would just run the Shelter Bomb. Right, Andy, yeah. have a... No, okay. Let's just move on. Uh, go ahead. See you, Andy. Yeah. Shaltier beating Frenzy. Uh, when this, when another of your Heteromorphics or Nazarix characters is reversed, this gets 3,000 power. So when your other character gets reversed, this gets plus 3k. Um, so potentially, if, if you're crashing two of your lanes before this attacks, you, you're swinging for potentially 10-5. At level one, which is pretty strong, but you're only winning one lane. Um, then. Yeah, you're losing but you're only lane. winning one lane then, unless you're playing a bomb. Alternatively, you don't need to get to ten five necessarily. Even if you just get one reverse before this, uh, it's getting to seventy five hundred, which is still very overstated for a one zero. It has um, synergy with the Shaltier bomb, but does, like, yeah. I would never run this card. Because it, it just seems so counterintuitive to yeah. the standby strategy of consistently winning board. Yeah, no, an do interesting not card, like... maybe just not for Overlord. Yeah. Goes in, goes in shelter waifu with the shelter. Yeah, yeah still shelter waifu. Yeah, because you're crashing your bombs anyway. All right, next. All right, we got V two one Eins, the boy uh, Eins, right of resurrection. Uh, plays at level one. If you have four or more heteromorphic race or Nazareth characters on board, when the standby is placed in your climax zone, if this is in the front row, choose one of your heteromorphic race or Nazareth characters and stand it. So you can stand by out your Cacutus and stand it, or yeah, stand by out your Cacutus and stand it up. He's even standing in the background of the standby climax. There he to is. Show you what you're hinting you at what you're supposed to do. Um, I think I don't think this is like a stretch to say. I think this is the absolute best like per like version of the pay one standard card cards like ever printed. I think this is the best version of that profile. 
like fact, by a considerable margin. The fact that oh, the, co what? the combo is the fact that the combo is free and it's on a reasonably sized body. Well, no, 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 because paying okay. one doesn't just stand your climax combo, Andy. It doesn't just stand your two two. It is a seven k body. Mm -hmm. So you paid one for a protectable body, and then it would be and stood a two two. Better. And 8k with the Alberta. Like, the god board is, this is an 8k, your Kirkutus is a 10.5. This is, like, the best possible version of the pay one stand to climax type You card. specifically need to have the Shalt here with this, though. No, you, you don't. Need four you need four no, more you other... don't. You just need four characters on the field. If you have four or more heteromorphic or characters, you need a full field to play this. Yes. At level one. Yeah, totally reasonable Meaning, thing. Meaning, if you're standbying, you're playing over something, so you no. need to have a way to pop a card. If you yeah, that's why you it. play the that's why you play the thing that pops a card. Well, yeah, that's uh, what I'm saying. Well, yeah, but you're you're forced to run it. Yeah, that's why you and, play three and of like it. Like I said before, I don't think that card's very good, and I don't oh. think this card's very good either. I think that card's broken with this card, and I think it's the reason to play Overlord is to play that this three card package. Really, uh, this I, two I, one. I disagree. I completely disagree. This, I don't think the Albedo, and the 2 2 is um, about as good as a standby combo that stands a card that uh, you hold to play something at level 1. This is as good as you get. Because, Andy, you have to remember you have two, two level 2s on the board now. Your opponent can't even side. With a climax, they have no out. Whatever, whatever. This guy's not even that strong. He's like seven k. He'll be have the shot, which is more than what? Day. Have you played any of these other stand to climax cards? Uh, They're like four or fives. They're four yeah, but, or fives. But, but but you don't have to stretch to play them. You just shove them in, and that's it. You don't have to stretch to play this either. What are you talking about? Like I, I know you don't like the Albedo. However, the Albedo is a good card. You cannot like it, but that doesn't make it bad. I actually don't have a problem just with the Albedo. It's just part of it. The part of the fact is I don't think the Albedo is particularly strong. Um, I think the Albedo is to close be, in, to in broken. In order for this to be like good, you need to run the Albedo. So it forces you to run a You would run the Albedo run anyway. Game. You would run the Albedo in any deck playing standby. Like, straight up, you would run that card. 100% of the like, time. This is like, I need to have a full field. I need to have that specific Shaltier on my field. What if you don't have it? What, what Shaltier are you talking about? I have the, no the idea. The zero one about. that I was shit talking earlier. That's not a Shaltier. That's running? an Albedo. Albedo. What, whatever. Yeah, they Albedo, right? Like, how many of that are you actually running? This is making three me of it. Two say, to three of it. I want to run four of it, probably. So I always have it. Mm, you would run two or three of it. You At only least need three. You three only need to see one of it. You only need to see one. Every additional copy you but draw. You need is bad. to see it right when you hit level one. You need to see this card. You have you hit three level one. turns on average to get see one card that you run two to three of, and you have yeah, plenty this of search tools. Doesn't seem consistent to me. And like you, you don't want to run four of this because he clogs. Have you ever played a turn against Drew? Have you ever played a single game against Drew's Overlord deck where he has not had this at level one, even in his worst games? The answer is no. He has hit this every single game that he has played the deck. I, I don't think that's an argument. Without fail. I don't think that's an argument saying, oh, I've never played with the card or I haven't played against the card. I have played I with the card don't either. Know how to evaluate it. I've played with their card that and against the card. You know why card. Drew has this card every time? Because he plays the card in multiple copies in his deck. He could also have a different card, a different level one combo. He could have which any is card worse if you're running standby. If he runs enough copies of it. We've it's already established. We've already established that putting the two two Kakutis on the board at level one is like probably the best thing you can do with standby, and this card does that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, just such a it's just such a roundabout way to do it, and it's like the Kokutis. How is, is it roundabout? Good. It's what the, you have access Kokutis to. Kokutis is extremely good. How do you attack with Kakutis on the turn it's summoned without this card? Because there's no right. other option. I mean, it, it just so happens that you are, you're playing standby in Overlord, and this happens to be the card that combos with the standby. So you play it incidentally, you know, even... Man, even I, I don't think it's not incidental. The card Kokutis is good. Is no, no, I, that, that's, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm getting at. But I, yeah, like, the card it, is it, it not happens, incidental. It happens to be the card that combos with the Climax. So even incidentally, you're running it. I'm not, I'm not in... The package is now. objectively good. It's, like, one of the only reasons to play standby good. and Overlord. I think it's incidentally running a lot of cards to make this 
weird jank. It's not incidental. Work. It's not jank. Why? Why wouldn't I? How just play is this Samurai, jank? Put the Cocutus in the back row and use him next turn. Why would I go through such lengths? Because you generate you one stop when he time. attacks. He, yeah, well, the, yeah, you stand by him out with this. The fact that he attacks. The attack the turn he comes he out. attacks for three on first deck and generates you a stock, and you also have a 2 1 8 K lane. Your opponent cannot side you. Yeah, because the, 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 the picture of the board is you'd, you'd play the, uh, the Irons, you'd have the Albedo in the front row, you play the Climax, you pop it, the, pop it back, give power to the Irons, play the Cocoitus where you pop back the Albedo. Yeah. And then yeah, like, I, what about this is, like... I get that, and I don't think it's good enough. I don't understand how that is at all clunky or hard to do. That's, like, unbelievably difficult, like, easy to do. You have to run a bunch of copies of this 2-1 that clogs. No, you, run you run three of, of it. it. Well, I mean, this would also get, be end, ended up uh, you probably need to, make sure to you be have it on You well. run three of it. You, this is a modern deck with modern tools that you can use to find cards. You have three turns to find cards. You need to find two cards and have one card engraved. How is this difficult to do? Like, by any modern standards. Like, it, it I, I don't understand how this is difficult to do. It's not difficult to do, but it's a lot of deck-building concessions. It's not a lot of deck-building concessions. I, I'm, running, I'm running at least three copies of this 2-1 that I think outside of this combo is not very good. It, you're running at least three, probably four copies of that um, Albedo level zero, which, as I said Okay, well, like, before, riddle me this, Andy. Very good. Riddle me this. L okay. This is how it works. Look, so your first level one turn, right? 2-1 Cocutus, Albedo. Albedo pops to him. Uh, Eins is an 8k. You summon Cocutus. Cocutus swings, your opponent cancels. You generate a stock. You swing with Eins, you swing with your shitter lane. They're at 1-5. Your opponent clocks. Okay, they don't get through their deck. They crash into your two lanes. And have one other lane that beats over your shitter. You draw into another standby. You summon and stand another Cocutus for free. You've now generated three additional stock for free and swung for three with your Cocutus on your opponent's first deck three times over two turns, generating three stock for free. Carmen, Carmen, what it sounds like you're saying to me is... This is, when, I'm saying, this is very winning, normal. No, I'm saying, this winning. is very normal. This is a very normal thing for Overlord to do against decks that cannot answer their board at level one. Decks that cannot, like, the only decks that can answer this at level 1 are decks that play some form of bounce at level 1, trigger a wind, or are 8 standby Fujimi that have 2 twos that this deck cannot answer. This is a, like, this situation that I've just outlined, very normal, very easy for Overlord to do. Extremely I mean, even, yeah, easy. I mean, this is extremely even, common board state to happen. Yeah, even without the, uh, the Albedo to, to make the god board, this card is perfectly serviceable on its own. Pulls out the Kikuta, stands it, lets it attack, ideally direct on the turn it comes out. Uh, where else was I going with this? Well, it lives cross turn, right? And you're running this Climax Swapper, so it doesn't even have to be the standby that you draw. You don't have to right. sack oh, into right. it. Yeah, exactly. You can get the standby back and, and, that yeah, you and, played and, the and, previous turn and play it again. Even if it's the only standby that you were out. And yeah, play it any again. Climax can become a standby. And get another Cocutus. Extremely relevant too, yeah. Like I, I know you're saying that this like only happens when you're sacking and shit like that. I'm trying to say not only is this extremely easy to set up, the follow up turn is extremely likely, based on how Overlord plays, how their deck is built, and how they play into a level one against another modern deck. This is like extremely likely to happen for them to get like double Cocutus if you don't answer a single Cocutus at level one somehow. Mm -hmm. It's like you have to. It's like trigger win. I, I think you're making a lot of deck building concessions to make it that consistent. You aren't though, because and Overlord doesn't have, have those cards. Deck. You I wouldn't. You have a stronger deck if you just played a different combo and used your deck spots in other ways. I just, so, I don't. know, Maybe I'm just getting hung up on the fact that I can't stop comparing the Albedo to the Silica combo at level zero. They are completely different. How is it at all similar two -one to the two one Joker in Persona Five? I don't understand how either of the cards you said are similar to these other cards are similar to them, because they're not. They're, like, completely different. Like, each one is completely different from the other. They have, the they only have same thing the is that they bounce back to hand, and the other one is a 2-1 early play. Those are the only things that are similar at all. They fulfill yeah, completely different part. functions. No, they're not. It's the least important part. 
the least important part. The most important part of the Albedo is the first effect. The second effect is incidental with the Ainz. To make it so that your Ainz combo doesn't neg one. Which, I think, in this deck, you would happily neg one to attack with Cocutus at level one. Every single time. You would happily neg one to do that. In this deck. I'm legitimately not being, like, dissonant to just to try to... <laughs> Like just make I know you're not. I'm trying to, like, really convince you, because, like, good. I think it's, like, it's one of the best things that you could possibly do at level 1 with a standby in a, like, half standby, half something else deck. Like, legitimately, extremely, extremely powerful interaction. So, so Andy, are you, are you saying if you don't play this card, not play standby at all, or run empty standby? What are you suggesting? Yeah, I don't understand the alternative. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I think if you're running... Okay, so if I were making a standby deck for Overlord, and this is like the only standby climax you have, right? Yeah, this is the one that combos with the standby, yes. Okay, then I would I would run this card. I would begrudgingly run it. Um, I think if you're running standby, you run this because it it, it just fits too well with the whole standby game plan right but i guess just comparing it to other standby decks it just doesn't seem as convenient or as high of a ceiling to me and like comparing it just like saying okay if i'm running standby i'm running this card but because running standby makes me run this card i would rather just play yellow at level one and have access to all the good things that we already said yellow has or potentially good things that maybe blue has that we haven't covered yet okay i'll put it this way then do you I think, think jabril standby, is a good card this, but do you I think, think one of jabril is a good overlord, card overlord i would not play standby because i think it's not worth it for the overall investment to play okay. standby in this set that that's fair do you think one of jabril is a good card do you think that's a good no, profile i don't okay so how is this card bad because that jabril is bad therefore this is bad how is attacking with a 2-2 two -two Cocuitus and generating a stock swinging for 3 on first deck bad? Uh, in No Game No Life, I could summon something off the Gibral. I'm not talking about No I Game No Life. Shit anyway. Well, you're making the comparison to it. Well, I'm saying, this compared to the Gibral, this card is 100% better. You get a defendable body. You get a defendable I, body out I, of this I don't card. Th I don't think either is good. I think they both have the same... This card is better issues. than that card, Chris. Yes, though, correct? This card is better than that. I would say it is better. Yes, it it's is a, better. It's card. more restrictive in how you have to use it. It's not restrictive. But I would say it's better. It requires you to have, you have, you have, have a full have board. Have a full field to early that play. extremely to normal and deck. easy thing to do at level one for any modern deck, especially one like this deck that has Ricky. It has a Ricky effect to plus itself on play. But you this need deck. something to pop back to your hand if you don't want to minus. Or like you would happily do this to minus. Quad. And that Albedo is extremely good. I know you dislike it. That Albedo is extremely good. You would run that in any deck that has standby. Mm. How is that card? So, Andy, I'm, I'm going to call this back to the Fujimi set review. Because this is a sticking point here. Because this, like, this is like the most important card in the set. One of the most important cards in the set. So I'm going to dwell okay. on it a little bit. Even though I said that we were going to tear through colors and shit. Um, this is one of the most important cards in the set. So we're going to go over it. You said this one Elvado you don't like, right? You, do, you don't like this card. Um, I don't. No, and that don't. you don't like it because it's clogging in standby. This same card, or a card that's worse than this card, in 8 standby Fujimi, you gave like a B or an A, which is the one that surveils on play and then pops back to hand and gives something a soul. You said that card was really good. You don't like this card. Can you explain to me why? Because I think this card is much better than the card that Are we, we talked about, about in Fujimi. Al the Albedo now? Yes, we're talking about the Albedo. We can pop back to that. Slide number 86. Because um, I think this card is extremely important for talking about the 2-1. You said that card in Fujimi that I said, which is surveil on play, pop back to hand, give something a soul when you play a climax, was very good because of the synergies that it had with standby. Mm-hmm. You are saying this card okay. is bad for the same synergies and an even more important effect for standby, which is holding board in another in two lanes as opposed to one, um, as well as refunding the card so that your standby goes even and it, because you plus a card to field and the card comes back to hand. But it makes your standby a straight plus one, even when your field is full. 
Uh, so, like, can you, like, reconcile that for me? Because I'm, like, very confused as to how you can say that one card is good and that this card is bad and cloggy. Because you had said, you said, when we were, like, doing the Fujimi set review, then I, I'm not, like, trying to call out here, you said that you would run four of this card in standby. Uh, the, that card that we talked about from Fujimi. And you're saying that this card isn't good enough. So I'm just, like, I'm trying to grill you here because I want to understand exactly why. That is exactly what I'm saying. Let yeah. me tell you why. The card in Fujimi, is, it surveils, right? You look at the top, and then you decide to put it on top or in the waiting room. This Albedo does not. This Albedo is a blind mill. Um, meaning you, you don't get to choose. Once you know what that card is that you know you would potentially mill, you don't get to use that information with Albedo. You have to mill it and say, oh, dang, it would have been nice to have that Climax on top and Brainstorm. Um, other factor... They both synergize in the same way with standby, correct? Where when mm -hmm. you play the standby, it pops back to your hand, gives a soul. And opens up a slot for you to standby. And opens up a slot mm -hmm. for your card to come in. Yes. Um, but I think it's partially contextual, too. I think, um, like, if you're just comparing the albedo to the other card, just, like, really just comparing it card to card, like, on a raw basis, the albedo probably is a bit better. However, I think it's contextual. I think Fujimi runs eight standby, and having access to, like, you're going to more consistently be playing the standby, and I think also having, being able to choose whether or not to mill the card is also beneficial. You can choose to trigger it if you want to hard trigger it. You can choose to keep it on top and brainstorm it if you'd rather do that. Um, I, I just think Surveil is much stronger than uh, and for anyone who doesn't know what I mean, surveil being terminology for look at the top card of your deck, either leave it on top or send it to your waiting room. As opposed okay, so to you value the surveil. Mill. You survive. I value the fact that I can look at the card and then decide what to do with it. Okay. Uh, and the other factor is Fujimi is eight standby. This is four standby. Mm -hmm. And I know you mentioned that there is a you know climax filter, but. That's just additional resources and ad additional shit you have to invest into it. That's, okay. Um, that's acceptable. I think that... I, I understand where you're coming from then. Like, you value the surveil, especially because it's 8 standby. You're, like, digging... And you get a lot more value for triggering standby in Fujimi than in Overlord, right? In Overlord, you want to play the standby. You want to play the standby so the Kokuta stands so that you'd attack. Um... I still think the second effect is, like, important enough to include at a 2-3 to three count in, like, any standby deck you play. Just due to the synergy of, like, making your standby a straight plus, regardless of what your field is, when you play it from hand. Because, like, sometimes you cannot control, or you cannot overplay, or you, like, don't lose a lane. Like, we, we've, all been, we've all played standby decks and just, like, never lost a lane. And you have to, like, minus over a 1-1 one, one or something retarded, right? Well, yeah, sorry. like I, to be honest, like I, I would if I were playing standby for Overlord, like I would want to have the Albedo in my deck. Like at well, some I, count, I, I, right? I, I, would, like... I would probably, I'd probably end up playing it. You know, I, I wouldn't be as happy playing it as I would the card in Fujimi or maybe the Silica in yeah. Sword Art. Because I've stated other benefits that those two cards have that this doesn't. Well, the, but... the Silica does everything, right? And it not only surveils, but it also pops back and then also pluses hand twice. Yeah, they're, um, they're different cards in different contexts. Um, I, would, I would run the Albedo. Just because, like, I, I do like the fact that I can end up getting, like, you know, I, I do have something that can pop back to my hand and open up a spot. And it does give you incremental benefits, such as the additional soul and the cross-turn power. Okay. Um, having and having two beefy level twos to defend is definitely a good thing. I, I just don't think, all in all, it's worth playing standby to get the two one to get the Kokutas. But if I, you are playing standby, I think you run it. Yeah, I don't know. I I think that it's just, I just like disagree. I think the the snowball potential of one turn of two one Kokutas into a second turn of two one two Kokutases is, like, too strong and too consistent to ignore. Because how good the Climax Whopper is, you're, like, incentivized to play high counts of it, and you're generating extra stock with the Kokutis. So, like, the extra stock to swap your Climax if you draw a door instead of a gate is negligible. And then that you've swung, like I said, you've swung for 
three times for three on average on first deck and generated an additional three stock over two turns. Because, like, statistically, your opponent, if if they're playing a normal deck and they're not in, like, a horrific, like, breaking out deck state, even with the Albedo, if the Albedo hits, you're swinging 2-2-1 two, two, into your opponent's field, probably, that they have. They're not favored to go to level two. So you're probably, like, you're, you're on average more likely to have a level a second level one turn with Overlord. Um, and even if you don't, you would still put Kokutus out if you were at level 2, if you had a Grave and you didn't refresh. Because again, I, I think like, 3 swings for 3 on average with like Kokutus generating 3 additional stock, if this card lives a turn, which I mean, let's, let's be honest, it probably is, 2 one k with like Shrouded by 2k backups, probably living it cross turn. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that's I think good. that snowball potential is like too strong to ignore. I think that that like that alone will win games. The like, the high roll does sound very high. I will concede. I guess it's just an argument of like, do we think it's a high roll or do we think it's normal? I'm like tending more to like that's actually normal for the deck, but I mean like that's fine. That's whatever. I guess we can rate this card now. Yeah, We've dug we into it enough. <laughs> I'm gonna give it an A, like A A plus. I think I depending think on the meta. Yeah, I, think I, I also like A. It's uh I will concede to Andy it's a hefty package, but I think it's worth it. If you're gonna play standby at all. Uh, I mean that's to be seen. You might just play win pants in English. Yeah. Depends I mean, I think, what the I think field the is. There. This card is completely carried by Kakoidus though. Oh yeah, like if Kakoidus was in the set, you would never just like swing a normal two two. I think, right? No, that, yeah. Maybe I just don't want to. Maybe I just don't want to admit that, like, the entire red green deck that everyone's hyping up is just play Cocutus and like forty six other cards. Yeah, uh, I it wish really, it wasn't. Really what it comes down to, though, yeah. I think, yeah. <laughs> I really wish it wasn't that because that is uninteresting, right? That's like it's an incredible. uninteresting it, conclusion. Nothing against Kokutis. He seems like a swell guy, but it seems like a boring deck. It's depressing, right? Like, it's depressing to say, like, this 2-2 two -two from the trial deck is, like, worth building 46 cards around. <laughs> um, but I think it's unfortunately true. Hmm. All right, let's move on. Let's tear through right, the rest of these. Wrap this up. Who gets to read? Uh, you, you can do it, Brian. Do whatever you want. Okay, cool. Uh, we have Sabus, Disguise Work. Uh, if you have two or more other heteromorphic race or Nazareth characters, gets 2,000 power and has hand on core. That's a uh, 2 2 standby target that's not Cocutus. Yep. yep. Yeah, <laughs> worse than Cocutus. Wait, it's also understated. This is like a 9 5. 9 5. It's, it's Jabari. Yeah, F. 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 Yeah, there's no reason to ever run this. Oh, wow. Why do they make these? Like, why do they make these cards? Because it's a common and it's pack filler. Ugh. True. All right, we already talked about this. I, I I think this card's very cute. I think it's fine. It's like a C plus. I think, or it might be better than that. I, I'll give I it like a B like minus. A, maybe it's a B minus. It's yeah, it's fringe playable. I, I yeah. was thinking it was just the bonder be makes just it good. Regular B. Yeah, the fact that you can bond to it makes it more relevant than it would be otherwise. Yeah, the the heal two the the two like first two modes are like uh both pretty good for three stock. Drew Drew is really hyping up this card a lot. Um, yeah, I think it might be worth. A little bit of a discussion because um i mean you're saving a lot of stock with your standbys yeah it makes it more affordable and, and extra stock with the cocutus that you paying three shouldn't be like an unreasonable thing and the fact that i like the fact that it's like main phase burn if you want yeah it. two and is it, good and it's also like versatile healing going to memory option too and i'm sure the eight thousand power while not as well the thing useful look at the other two effects is you this, know, you could probably find a use for it. If you were strictly burning, this opens up pretty unique lines of play where, like, you have the event and the bonder in hand. Play the event. The two damage sends it to waiting room, not to memory. Play the bonder, grab it back, burn again. And it gives you a good way to, like, out your extra stock, right? Um, like, burn two, burn two in memory for six is, uh... It's not as good as the million live three, three, uh, three seven event. Right. But, um... It's fine. Uh, this is much more versatile than a 3-7 event, though. Yeah, because yeah. it also has the heal mode. You it's could, like... It, yeah. it costs half as much, can also heal you, can also pump your character. Yeah, like, I, I like it. You can live the dream with it and get multiple burns, but you could also just play it once and do whatever you need it to do. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the fact that Cutis is ideally generating you absurd amounts of extra stock makes this makes this a lot more, better. Much more, yeah, much more appealing. I'll bump it up to a normal B. Yeah, you know, it'll convince me. This is, uh, this is fine. The Bonder, too. Bonder puts it over the edge for me. I mean, the, I don't mean to bump it down, but it, it just seems like a niche card to me. Like, it's like an... You include it if... It's not like an auto-include. It's a good way to close the game, right? Because you're, like, grinding people out. Especially if you're not playing the, uh... You're not playing the restander thing, right? So I think this goes in that restander thing slot. When you, like, play the two of the TD combo. It's like a good way to burn out. And it's probably, like, a plus because all the other finishers suck. Yeah. So far. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, and then let's talk about this last card. Well, let's not talk about it. This card's unplayable. We already talked about this. F. F2 meme. Yeah, it's a meme card. Not a fan. I'll say F plus for meme. F plus for meme. Fair enough. Yeah, don't I, b- I believe someone could come up with a cool burn deck with it, but I, I don't really know how to evaluate it. I wish it. it would be good, but it's not. I mean, yeah, it's you can't even play it. multiples of it. I mean, just yeah. imagine it. Yeah, that limits it. It really does. It puts all your clean cards from the top of your deck into memory. It compresses you. Damn. All right. Well, that's it for red. We'll see you guys in blue.